Hey, Reject Nation, how you doing? It's Greg Alba here. Jonald! We're gonna watch the trailer for 1989's Pet Cemetery today. Right, Fred Gwynn! I don't really remember the original. I never read the book. I remember something about a cat dying. Church. Cat comes back, then a kid dies. Right. And doesn't and come back right. Or, uh, I, I believe Flash and Friends resurrect Superman. Yeah, they turn the earth backwards, and then, you know, he comes back to life. It's great. What? <laughs> I was doing the Justice League joke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't you remember the Justice League? A bit. When he says Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Oh, no. Yeah, I you I yes did not and that. that you joke. yes and that. Totally incorrect. I man. know. I just, we could have had a good bit going and you ruined uh, it. Yeah, those, those references are really what stood out to me from Justice League. It was the funniest <laughs> moment in the movie. Definitely <laughs> the funniest moment in the movie. I just should have remembered it Whatever. from all you one ruined, time. You <laughs> ruined the joke. Let's watch this Sorry. remake. That's what I do. Dress like a pet. I dig it. Do you remember that one? I do. <laughs> Chase, Chase and Clark's in every right. horror movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every re what do you think? revitalization. Wow. This whole place is ours? I even got him to throw in a whole forest. There's a new backyard. Whoa. Jump scares. <laughs> <laughs> with a big old beard to something else church the ground is bad oh cool maybe just some crazy folk tale oh. there is something up in those woods say we're remaking Pet Cemetery for the modern day, this is a thousand percent what I would expect. So <laughs> yeah. no doubt. Maybe because I, I want to sound like an intellectual film nerd, the parts I was most drawn to in the trailer, the very beginning looked very cliche, but then, <laughs> but then when they started doing the... Yeah, with like the little drum and stuff. Yeah, and, and then they were kind of doing this quiet place looking vibe since yeah. Paramount Pictures had a big hit off that. <laughs> yeah. And we were looking at the woods and everything, like that mood and atmosphere, that was really appealing to me. That was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is this is a little bit different. And then it turned into, oh, this is Pet Cemetery the remake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it definitely Even looks... I barely remember it. I'm like, yeah, this, this looks like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like the, the setup of Pet Cemetery is pretty simple to wrap your head around, you know? You bury things in the uh, unholy ground and they come back wrong. Like Superman. Like Superman. When he spun around the earth. I, you know, I just, I tried and I failed and I'm always going to remember that thanks to this video. I'm never going to forget that joke. Pet, pet, pet cemetery. I like the vibe of this trailer. I, I like horror stuff that takes place like in the countryside when it's not just like, oh, we live in a haunted house when mm -hmm. there's like a little bit more to what makes it freaky. Yeah. And uh, I like these like kids in masks and stuff. I feel like that's a kind of a neat way to expound upon this. It kind of looks like um, a cultish vibe that are going on. I think this is the two dudes. This is uh, Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Woodmeyer who made starry eyes so i gotta imagine that there will be a fair amount of intensity to the overall punch and tone of this movie. yeah i mean even though it looks like pet cemetery the remake <laughs> for the 2010s <laughs> yeah it still looks like it could definitely be very effective it looks like in, it could in its mood and tone i feel like jason clark deserves a good horror movie for the amount of appearances he makes in so many movies yeah <laughs> yeah especially these days you know john lithgow always a delight john 
Yeah. John Lithgow is terrific. He constantly shows up in things where I expect him to be in something a lot more campy, but then it <laughs> ends up not being campy. He's good at taking that kind of stuff seriously. <laughs> yeah, you know? And he looks good with a big old beard on, too. If you got to replace Fred Gwynn, all right, you know, I feel like uh, John Lithgow is not a bad choice. <laughs> I just hope this film has some life about it, you know? Like, it's, it's the first trailer, so they're going to try to sell you on the mood and the horror. And that, the stuff that makes it Pet Cemetery. And not even the fact that the first Pet Cemetery was necessarily a great film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always regard that as one of, like, the middle area Stephen King adaptations. Yeah. There's, like, a fair amount of it's people a, who love like it. It's like a memorable, it's... cheesy film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some cool stuff about it, but it's not aged incredibly uh, well. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. definitely not. I especially think what makes stories like this very effective is if the characters and the family have like real personality rather than just a lot of staring and a lot of yeah. mood and link like always a setup of this is a horror movie yeah. this is a horror movie like even in just their family scenes for movies like this to where like i think of the conjuring movies those films work so well because the families have such a life about them that mm -hmm. when scary stuff's not happening it doesn't feel like a horror movie the way this movie's lit and shot yeah. makes it seem like it's always going to be a horror movie yeah, yeah. it's going to be dark and dour the whole time and the kids are all yeah. going to know like right up front that this is bad <laughs> yeah. yeah that's something I, I definitely would want is a strong family dynamic especially because you do get those iconic scenes at least with the i don't know if they're going to twist it but at least with the little boy coming back and like that's pretty wrenching if maybe it'll be parent. the little girl this time could be. I mean, it certainly seems like they're pitching her as a focal character. I mean, they have, like, the first few shots of the trailer. Like, yeah. Are, are you excited to be living here now? Yeah. <laughs> Is this all ours? Well, I get the impression that because It was such a successful remake. We're just going to do all the Stephen King Yeah, now. all the Stephen King ones that were, people were not fully satisfied with, and now we'll remake them for the modern day time yeah. to satisfy us. Let's get a third Shining. Yeah. <laughs> Let's nail that bad yeah. boy down. Let's get one that both the audience and Stephen King can agree upon. And the late Stanley Kubrick will also like him. Oh yeah, he'll be thrilled. All the wood stuff does look cool. I think there's a lot of cool, as much as much jokes as we're, we're cracking here. I mean, yes, it's got a lot of its cliche stuff, you know. Bloody fingerprints on mm. stuff. This weird fucking like weird screechy sound at a fast edit stuff. Creepy you know? kids in the woods yeah. and stuff. The part that looked most appealing to me is when the trailer was slowing down and taking its time because that level of mood can really get underneath someone's skin. And I think for Pet Cemetery to be effective, you got you got to do that. And I don't know if this is more closely linked to the actual source material or not. I have no idea. But something strikes me in terms of the direction of like the first one's pretty cheesy. Yeah. So we got to make something super serious. Like, go the complete opposite route. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, part of what makes it so effective is the fact that when you're hanging out with the kids... It feels like Stand By Me or yeah, something. Yeah, it might seem like a weird point to harp on, but I think it's a very important point to make sure that when it's not horror, you don't treat it like you're in a horror movie. Yeah, you <laughs> want it to be just a family who's on this movie yeah. and who's you know going through this experience together. And that is one thing I definitely hope that they they at least build out in this movie. But even, I mean, what, is, is Lithgow Judd? Is that yeah. the name? Yeah. Yeah, the Fred Gwynn character. Yeah, the five I got. Cause yeah, the Fred Gwynn was like, "Yep, buried your cat for a reason." <laughs> yeah. What we did, Lois, was a secret. I right, show you this, and then immediately regret it. Yeah, <laughs> all the suspicious, over the top kind of character. Yeah. And then you got John Lithgow, who looks like traumatized and serious yeah, you know it's yeah, a very yeah. different take which like an old man who's been living alone in the woods <laughs> which is like cool to do like if you're gonna do a remake do the opposite to give it a different execution yeah um, give it a different flavor i guess one thing that this made me wonder about was uh you know i feel like one of the freakier elements of the original movie is zelda you know they come in on her on the bed and she's all like withered and weird we didn't really get a sense for that in this trailer so i wonder if maybe they're gonna do something different about that or if maybe on like a trailer number two we'll get an actual glimpse at that but no. No? You don't no. think so? <laughs> cut, that, cut that entirely out of the movie. <laughs> well, hey, before uh, we wrap this up, I wanted to give a page from the day shout out to a man who is in love with horror, and that's a guy named Scuba Steve. Scoobs. Guys, go check out this guy's Instagram. He does a lot of illegal graffiti work art. Uh, find him, arrest him as soon as you can. Man needs to be stopped, but set him up in the way where even while he's in prison, he can still remain pledged to the Patreon. Don't want him to get access 
access to any of the exclusive videos over there. Yeah. But still want his pledge still to go through every month. That's all I really care about. But Scuba Steve, I know Halloween time is one of your ultimate times. You have a tradition. You're listing off many of films that you like to watch this time of year. I hope you get that tradition going. It's a good time to do online dating. Invite a girl over to your place. She gets scared, grabs onto your chest, maybe digs her nails deep into your chest. Then you cry, you yell at her, and then it's over because that's the way you operate and you need to get your shit together. So like a good day. Anyway, you can graffiti her. Hey guys, you can subscribe to the Reject Nation. You can click that notification bell because YouTubers always say that. And you can check us on Patreon. Over there we have TV show reactions as well as weekly Q&As. I don't know why I'm talking with such a serious face. Bye-bye.